Today I will discuss about direct ophthalmoscope. Did you ever think from cornea through pupil up to retina all structures are transparent and the retina is also somewhat reflective. So why can't we see it with our naked eye? There are two reason why can't we see it through our naked eye. First reason the retina is not very reflective. Only about one ray out of 10,000 or 1 lakh of rays entering the eye is reflected back out. Thus, one would need an extremely bright light source entering the eye to see the retina. Second reason is, the observer's eye and head block the rays of light coming from infinity that illuminate the part of the retina he or she is trying to observe. Direct ophthalmoscope is an instrument used to examine the interior of eye, that is fundus, which include optic discs, optic cup, macular region, and part of posterior retina. Then media opacities. Through the ophthalmoscope, we can identify corneal or internal opacities. Then gross examination of refractive condition. We can perform Bruckner test with ophthalmoscope which gives us rough estimation of refractive status of the eye. The direct ophthalmoscope was invented by Babbage in 1884. However, its importance was not recognized and it was reinvented by von Helmholtz in 1850. Principle of direct ophthalmoscope If patient's eye is emetropic, then light rays directed from a light source in the fundus reflected as parallel beam. If this beam enters the pupil of an emetropic observer, the rays are focused on the observer retina and an image of patient's fundus is formed. Characteristics of the image formed in the observer retina The image is erect, the image is virtual and 15 times magnified. Now structures of ophthalmoscope. Structures of ophthalmoscope can be divided into two parts. One, the illumination system to the viewing system. The illumination system. It sends light to subject's eyes and consists of an electric incandescent lamp, an aperture, two lenses and a small 45 degree mirror. An electric incandescent lamp. Light rays from the lamp are slightly converged by the lens 1. Then lens 2 focuses the rays so that an image of the lamp filament is produced on the mirror. An aperture. The aperture between lens 1 and lens 2 allows different shapes and colors of illumination. These apertures are mounted on a horizontally oriented thumb wheel so that different ones can be used at different times. A small 45 degree mirror. Light rays from the mirror diverge, forming a cone-shaped bundle of rays that enter the subject eyes. The bundle of rays passes through the cornea, anterior chamber, crystalline lens, vitreous and rays to retina. Some of the rays are stopped by the iris, but others pass through the pupil and then to the retina. Now the viewing system. It allows the observer to see light reflected from the subject's eye. The bundle of rays that reach to patient's retina reflected back through the vitreous crystalline lens, anterior chamber, cornea and lastly through the viewing hole enter into observer eye. When the bundle of reflected rays from the patient's retina strike to observer retina, an image of patient's fundus is formed in the observer retina that allows the observer to examine the patient fundus. Small diameter compensating lenses are placed just behind the viewing aperture. They allow the observer to bring into focus the image from the subject's retina if the subject is not emetropic. Now procedures of the test. Prerequisites. Room should be semi-dark room. Explain the patient about the procedure. Explain the patient that you need to go as much as closer to the patient's eyes to see the retina. 
If mitratic is used to dilate pupil for better view of patient's fundus, then we need to explain the consequences related to dilated pupil. Procedures The patient is asked to sit comfortably and looking straight ahead. The observer may stand or sit it slightly over to the side of the eye to be examined. Patient's right eye should be examined by the observer with his or her right eye and left eye with the left eye. Now the observer is focusing through the viewing hole and reflect beam of light from the ophthalmoscope into patient's pupil. Once the red reflex is seen by the observer, should move as close as patient's eye as possible. Once the retina is focused, the details should be examined systematically starting from discs, blood vessels, the four quadrants of the general background and the macula. If patient and observer is not emetropic, then rays may not focus on the observer retina. In such case, compensation lenses can be used to focus the rays on the observer retina. Compensation lenses that is spherical plus and minus lenses are incorporated inside the ophthalmoscope. As only spherical plus and minus lenses are incorporated, if any patient or observer is having cylinder power, simply we can use spherical equivalent. Now apertures available in ophthalmoscope. Large and small circle light source. The small circle light source is used when the pupil is very constricted or we examine the patient fundus without dilatation. The large circle light source is best if using mitratic eye drops to dilate the pupil. Half circle light source. If for example the pupil is partially obstructed by a lens with cataracts, then the half circle can be used to pass light through only the clear portion of the pupil to avoid light reflecting back. 3. Red free circle. It is used to visualize the vessels and hemorrhages in better detail by improving contrast. This setting will make the retina look black and white. 4. Slit beam. It is used to examine contour abnormalities of the cornea, lens and retina. 5. Blue light. Some ophthalmoscopes have these features that can be used to observe corneal abrasions and ulcers after fluorescent staining. 6. Grid Used to make a rough approximation of relative distance between the retinal lesion. It also used in visuoscopy to identify amount of eccentric fixation. Now indications of direct ophthalmoscope. 1. To diagnose opacities in refractive media. Any opacity in refractive media is seen as black shadow in the red glue. Here is an example of media opacity that may see through the ophthalmoscope. 2. Bruckner test. Bruckner test gives an idea about refractive status of the eye even without retinoscopy. We have already prepared a video on the Bruckner test. You can check this video, link is available in the description box. 3. Cup Dix Ratio in Glaucoma Cup Dix Ratio can be identified by direct ophthalmoscope, which gives an early detection of glaucoma. Here in this figure you can see this is disc, this is cup. The ratio between these two structures is called Cup Dix Ratio. Cup Dix Ratio more than 0.3 is glaucoma suspect. 4. Visuoscopy Eccentric fixation can be identified by direct ophthalmoscope with grid aperture. Visuoscopy is important for the patient with amblyopia or strabismus. 5. To differentiate between a mole and a hole of the iris. On distant direct ophthalmoscopy, the mole looks black, but a red reflex is seen through the hole in the iris. 6. To recognize a detached retina or a tumor arising from the fundus. A grayish reflex is seen instead of red reflex on distant direct ophthalmoscopy indicates either a detached retina or a tumor arising from fundus.